Hi guys, let's have a discussion on today's set of questions. Uh, we are going to discuss uh, this with um, the usual, what we say, note approach. We will look at uh, politics, economics and whatever is left, I mean whatever comes in. Alexander Lukashenko is the president of, uh, this is Alexander Lukashenko, he is a dictator, he is a dictator who has run his country for last 26 years. Since 1994 he has been the president of Belarus. Look at the choices, Ukraine, Georgia, Moldova, Poland and Belarus. Let's look at where are these and then take notes. Hmm. Um, you look at, you have this uh, country Belarus here, this is Belarus my friends, okay, this is Belarus, uh, okay, this is Ukraine, you have Poland here, See, Belarus is surrounded by, you know, uh, on its east, it's bordered by Russia, which is a very large country, as you know. And uh, on its south is Ukraine, completely Ukraine. You have Poland, which is on its west. Uh, on its north and uh, northwest, uh, you have Latvia and Lithuania. Um, a small portion, you see, this is Russia. This small portion, you see this here, this is Russia. This belongs to Russia. So, a large part of Russian territory is in Asia, that's why it's called a Eurasian country, okay? Russia is called an Eurasian country, a Eurasian country. So let's look at Belarus. See, Belarus uh, has been uh, in political turmoil. There's been a lot of controversy regarding the recent elections in Belarus. Uh, Alexander Lukashenko, you know, he, he runs the country with an iron fist, an iron fist. And he does not like criticism, he does not like being, you know, spoken against. And he has held the, you know, all organs of the state are, you know, are under his, uh, what do you say, palm. They just, you know, he just crushes every kind of criticism. But this time around, you know, uh, things went uh, to a very different level and uh, when elections were held, you know, uh, he said to have won 90%, 90% of the vote. Now imagine in any kind of, you know, uh, any kind of country where there's a lot of dissatisfaction against the ruler, the current, you know, the president or prime minister, whoever it is, okay. Uh, there's a lot of dissatisfaction against the uh, head of the government and that guy gets 90%. How, how is that possible? This man has been criticized for dismissing, um, you know, coronavirus as a psychosis. In fact, see, look at contrast that with our Prime Minister. Our Prime Minister from day one has been saying it's, it's a very dangerous thing. Please make sure you take care of yourself. Whereas this man, he said, no, no, you don't have to worry. It's just like a normal flu and it's in a state of mind. There's nothing to worry about. You just get on with life. He told his people and that cost a lot of lives in this country. So elections were held recently and he said to have a 90% of the vote, 10% um, uh, went to his rival Svetlana. But then, you know, uh, when people came on the road and began to protest against his, you know, asking him to resign for irregularities in the election, he kind of used force against those people and that boomeranged on him. Now there are bigger protests. Uh, Almost all the major countries of the world, major power blocks, including the European Union, have come against, uh, you know, have stood against this man. The only major power that's, you know, is standing by the side of Alexander Lukashenko is Russia. Russia's President Vladimir Putin, himself a past master at uh, engineering elections, he's, um, you know, he's um, a good friend of. Lukashenko. So anyway, um, the guy is in deep trouble. He's uh, many people say I read international affairs and um, this is my favorite area. And he's now in talks with um, neighboring countries. He wants to exit. He wants to leave the country. Uh, but then the people of Belarus want him to stand trial for all the kinds of crimes he had committed when he had been, you know, as you know, during his rule as president of the country. So since 1994, this man has been ruling the country. Okay, now you think about this. Um, you know, this all these countries are anti-Belarus, Latvia, Lithuania. In fact, they are all anti-Russia. By definition, Ukraine, Lithuania, Latvia, Estonia, Poland are all anti-Russia. 
when they are anti russia obviously they'll be pro yeah they'll be pro the west now the west here in this case is germany france britain america and all so you know enemy is enemy is a friend these are friends but uh, uh, enemy friends enemy is also an enemy so this guy's enemy is this so this is an enemy here i mean it's a complicated word but then that's how the world is it's a pretty complicated place life is never easy so let's write about belarus belarus um, the capital is minsk minsk m i n s k okay let me write there it's a force of habit uh capital is minsk and this is the president alexander lukashenko and the currency is ruble currency is ruble my handwriting is in great i can't really help it that's this is the only handwriting i have and uh, you may wonder with this kind of handwriting uh, this guy could have become a teacher <laughs> could have become a doctor but i became a teacher so anyway uh, let's look at uh, ukraine yeah you want the nickname of belarus big nickname of belarus is white russia white russia nickname of belarus white russia so ukraine ukraine's capital is you could see here this is the capital you could write k i k i e v or k y i v both are fine i i normally go with k i e v k i e v kiev the president is a guy called volodymyr zelensky yeah volodymyr zelensky volodymyr zelensky this is the president okay so and the currency is um, you know uh, currency of U ukraine is um, iranian this is the currency of ukraine okay this is also in use okay uh, georgia georgia is a tiny country you can see it's here yeah down here this is georgia okay georgia's um, president uh, so capital is tbilisi t is silent tbilisi is a capital the president is salome jorabishvili let me write here in some places you may find an a here it's okay jorabishvili that's the president and the currency of uh, what is it uh, georgia is you know uh, lari l a r i lari l a r i that's georgia then where do we go guys we go to moldova and poland this is moldova oh boy i am new to this you know this is new so little difficult this is a very tiny country here moldova this was a part of the ussr see all these were parts of the soviet union this entire area what part of the soviet union this is all soviet union okay see estonia latvia lithuania belarus that is belarus ukraine moldova georgia armenia azerbaijan 10 nations or uh, 9 plus russia 10 then 11 kazakhstan kyrgyzstan uzbekistan uh, tajikistan and turkmenistan so 5 15 15 province states made one country called the soviet union the soviet union existed between 1922 and 1991 in 1991 the country disintegrated all the 15 states 15 provinces became separate countries independent countries and moldova is one such country okay it's a very it's not a rich or any it's not doing well actually yeah a lot of people are migrating out of the country um the capital of moldova is chisinau chisinau this is moldova m o l d o v a okay chisinau and the president is uh, this is a parliamentary thing prime minister ion chiku ion chiku and the currency is liu this is the currency 
okay i guess that's fine i think moldova hmm poland yeah let's write poland poland's capital is warsaw it's the only capital city whose name starts with w and ends with w warsaw the president is andrej duda uh, in some places you may find a z here in between that's okay i'm giving you a simpler spelling okay andrej duda andrej duda so that's a little bit about this country guys okay uh, yeah you want want to know the currency of uh, poland uh, that is sorry that is zloty j l o t y z l o t y sorry z l o t y zloty okay see this one you see this at the bottom here i put a mark here in red okay sorry guys uh, this one this is gibraltar what is it gibraltar this is the mediterranean sea and the, you know the approach to mediterranean sea is through this particular portion this is africa and this is gibraltar here okay so i mean it's a very small place it's owned by britain the spain ownership of this okay um so oh boy in any case doesn't matter here uh, there is the next question which country has recently proposed the creation of bricks innovation base to take forward 5g fifth generation of telecommunication technology and artificial intelligence cooperation among five countries what are the five countries brics countries okay so what are these the answers china china has proposed this but not many there aren't many takers on this because cooperation with china entails sharing of data sharing of intelligence sharing of technology sharing of infrastructure which a lot of these countries especially you know um, south africa and india are quite wary of china as a brazil is okay to a large extent brazil and china have a very good relationship and uh, russia Ch russia hates the united states so china hates the us enemy is enemy is a friend yeah so russia's enemy is us us's enemy is china china becomes a friend of you know uh, what we say russia so they have a pretty good relationship but recently russia accused china of stealing secrets you know missile secrets well then that's what china does all the time yeah um, why don't i tell you a little about the you know the leaders of these countries so we have china china's capital is beijing beijing china's capital is beijing the president is xi jinping when you read this name it is shi it's like shi she okay the female gender so fem yeah she is in ping and this currency is renminbi what is china renminbi renminbi hmm so china and uh, brazil my friends uh, the capital is brasilia sorry uh, brasilia the president is a guy called jair bolsonaro okay jair bolsonaro so brazil is named after a kind of wood the wood is called pau brasilia but it's okay you just write the capital brazil's capital is brasilia the president is jair bolsonaro and he is like you know that guy lukashenko he dismissed he said well it's just a normal flu and you don't have to worry and today brazil has probably the highest casualty per you know um, among large countries highest death, death rate and the currency of brazil is uh, real or you can say real also it's portuguese real okay that's Bra that is uh, brazil should we look at south africa yeah south africa uh, three capitals just write one now for now write one or you want to write all cape town you know sorry i'm so sorry 
Cape Town, uh, what is this next one? Bloemfontein. How do we erase this? Yeah. I'll just try this. Why worry too much about it? This is the second capital. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, uh, this is what has inspired, um, uh, this is what has inspired um, so the Indian state of Andhra Pradesh to have three capitals actually. So, I mean, they are like, you know, they say that uh, let's have uh, three capitals. So, Cape Town one, uh, Bloemfontein, and the third one is Pretoria. Pretoria. Okay, so three capitals uh, that South, Am South Africa has and its president is a guy called Cyril Ramaphosa. Sorry, sorry. P-H-O S-A. Cyril Ramaphosa. Ramaphosa. P-H-O S-A. Hmm. Uh, it's in deep trouble. Economically, it's in deep, deep trouble. Russia, Russia is, um, you know, about Russia, I think the president and everything, so we'll keep it out. But you could write one thing, uh, the term BRIC, initially it was BRIC only, B-R-I-C, was coined by Jim O'Neill of Goldman Sachs. You know, it's an investment banking firm from America. Jim O'Neill coined the term BRIC. Coin the term brick. Okay. According to Picoli.com, India with an average monthly wage of about four thirty-seven dollars has been placed on the seventy-second rank. Seventy-second. So these guys have taken, you know, uh, what's a wage rates, and they have looked at wage rates uh, after tax. So what comes into your hand is the wage rate in this case. So wages of 437 is the average monthly income in India. Well, look guys, this is on the, I would say on the higher side because not many Indians earn money in the way, in the, not just today. I mean, um, you know, um, just about um, less than 6 lakh people in India declare an annual income of over 25 lakhs. Just 6 lakh have filed income tax returns of that declare any where they declare an annual income of more than 25 lakhs. You know, that it's very difficult to earn money as it is, but uh, then in this case <laughs> it's much worse. So uh, we are 72nd rank, the best, uh, the top five, I would say. I will give you the wage only for the first one, okay? So, right, um, Switzerland wage is $59.89 per month. $59, $89 per month. One is Switzerland, Switzerland, okay. One Switzerland. Two would be Luxembourg. You could write, uh, I'll spell it for you. So uh, I think, uh, you know, uh, I'll just write it, write this for you. Luxembourg. Luxembourg. Number two. Number three is the US. Number four is Denmark, if I'm not wrong. Fifth is Singapore. This is the highest in India, uh, Asia. Okay. So uh, highest is Switzerland. Two is Luxembourg. Again, in you know, it's Switzerland's neighbor, uh, Luxembourg. Third is the United States. Fourth is Denmark. Fifth is Singapore. So. There are in the top five, three are in the US, uh, three are in Europe. Uh, the, uh, outside Europe, it is the highest uh, monthly income is in the US, and outside the US and the Europe, okay, uh, you take Asian Africa, the highest is Singapore. Highest is Singapore. They ranked uh, what 106 countries, 106 countries. The last was Cuba. Cuba had an annual income, had a monthly income of an average Cuban had the monthly income of what? $36. $36. That's pretty low. Okay. Now China was like what? Uh, I think China was, China ranked 41. China ranked 41 with an income of $962. $962. China ranked 42. India ranked 72. 
with 437 china ranked 41 with 962 hmm? so work hard build skill you'll get a great job that's how i i look at the world this is uh, major dhyan chan you know whose birthday happens to be our national sports day major dhyan chand uh, he's actually with major dhyan singh major dhyan singh you know his name was dhyan singh but you know this one dhyan singh but where did this come from this came from one particular thing he used to practice at you know in the night after duty hours he was he was in the indian army after duty hours okay he would wait for the moon to come so that in the moonlight he would you know he could practice because in those days there were no major lights okay in stadium forget about anything else you know uh, stadiums were the last places to have lights so he would work he would wait for the moon to come so in moonlight he would practice that's why he was called chand okay he was nicknamed chand by his teammates now we say now we say dhyan chand it's not chand it's chand it is chand but it's okay we can it's a proper now so major dhyan chand the one india you know he is considered the greatest hockey player in the history of the game and that my friends uh, get you know is because he you know he got he is a member of the indian you know, hockey team india won three you know gold medals one was um, three olympics uh, 19 sorry 1928 1928 32 and no no not 32 36 uh, yeah, 32 and 36. 32, 36. 36. 36 happened in Berlin and, at, and uh, he was, he met Adolf Hitler. So Adolf Hitler asked him, why don't you come to Germany and I'll make you a colonel in the, in the, you know, in the Indian, in the, in the German army, Nazi army, you know. So impressed was Hitler, but he refused to. Of course, he was an Indian, so he refused. Um, his birthday, uh, you know, uh, is celebrated as National Sports Day. He was, uh, if I'm not wrong, he was born in 1905, Major Dhyan Chand, and he passed away in 1979. 1979. So, August 29th, 1905, he was born, and he passed away on, I think, of, um, January 3rd, no, uh, sometime in December 3rd, January, December 3rd, 1979. December 3rd, 1979. Now, this is uh, National Sports Day of India. What's the national sport of India? <laughs> there is no national sport. India doesn't have a national sport. Please know that India doesn't have a national sport. But India has a lot of national symbols. So, I'll just give you something. You know, you could write national uh, vegetable. What is the national vegetable of India? Pumpkin. Pumpkin. What is the national fruit of India? Uh, mango mango okay uh, national what we say tree of india banyan i think it's called bargat in hindi okay uh, the national calendar of india saka calendar s a k a saka calendar okay uh, and um, if you look at national animal the royal bengal tiger bengal tiger you could write national animal is bengal tiger then national aquatic animal aquatic not normal aquatic water based you could write south asian river dolphin south asian river dolphin so south asian river dolphin what's the national reptile of india reptile <laughs> reptile of india king cobra king cobra king cobra a lot to learn guys lot to learn you know national flower is lotus and all that stuff but there are a lot of things we don't know so i just wish to share a few things with you you know what are the national colors of india the national colors of india would be uh, saffron green white and blue four national colors of india saffron green white blue okay these are the normal national colors when it comes to sports you know like dhyan chanji was a sports person you know um sports is what say i think it's called sky blue it's sky blue the sports color is sky blue 
Okay. There are a lot of national things that we wrote. Which program I recently will not be the Indian government to promote startups and software products in small towns? Uh, it's Chunauti. What is it? Chunauti. You want to write this? You please write this. Chunauti. Underline that. Chunauti. Um, underline that first point. Launched by launched by the Ministry of the Union Ministry of the Union Ministry of Electronics Electronics and Information Technology. The Ministry of Electronics and Information Technology. Then um, second point. What is it? To identify, to identify, to identify about 300 startups, about 300 startups in, in different areas like, in different areas like EduTech, FinTech, and Agritech and ag Agritech I'm just saying three there are more like supply chain management skilling and all that like when you say you are talking about only one two examples okay next funding is provided funding is provided up to the funding is up to rupees 25 lakh 25 lakh plus other facilities other facilities other facilities hmm. we need this a lot of um, apps home based apps are doing well in, yeah i think there is one app called chingari i think it's um, it's like tiktok hmm? i'm not a fan of these apps but uh, they help you know generate a lot of employment people you know they help a lot of people do well reach a larger audience larger target which is good which is always good yeah as long as it helps our people our country nothing like it so the following cricketers has become the first fast bowler to take 600 test wickets well this is james anderson james anderson and um, you know there are four bowlers in Test history who have taken 600 wickets. Um, the highest wicket taker is Murli. Murli Taran. Muttaya Murli Taran. Okay. He has taken 800 wickets. One. Two is Shane. Vaughan. I think he has taken 708 if I am not wrong. And third is our Anil Kumble. Kumble Sahab has taken about 619 wickets. And this guy, James Anderson, has taken his 600th wicket recently. Hmm? He's a fast bowler, but you fast bowler, you look at those other names on the screen, they're all spinners. They're all spinners. So among fast bowlers, the first guy to take 600 test wickets. I mean that's phenomenal my friends, but a fast bowler to, long, to last so long is an amazing tribute to, and that's an amazing tribute to his fitness, his, his, his zeal to do well and stay strong physically and mentally. Because fast bowlers typically run, you know, the risk of, you know, hurting their ankles, their back and all that stuff. He's done very, very well. So in any case, that's a little about uh, this, uh, you know. But Murli Tharan has taken more wickets than anyone else and at a much, what we say, much uh, lower average, it's about 22.7 something, yeah? Which of the following statements holds correct for check truncation system by the RBI? Uh, what's check truncation? See, when a check is sent, a physical check is sent, let's say I don't have papers here. The physical check is sent, let's say this is a check, okay? 
this is sent and what happens is that um, when I deposit a check in the bank, normally in the past the old system is this would go to the clearance house from the head office, from there it would go to the clearance house and then it would go to the other bank and that would take a lot of time. And if it were an outstation check, would my need is you forget about it, you forget about it, it would take 15 days kind of thing. But nowadays, you know, you get instant credit and that happens because of certain systems in place like for example the check truncation system, truncate means end, cut. So what happens is this check is sent to the bank. Now instead of sending the physical copy of this check, what, is, what happens is this, you know, uh, an electronic image of the check is sent and the software reads the MICR, the signature, everything else. Whatever is required, the software reads and see if there is the, you know, if it's authentic, it's passed. And that is how, where things get easy for us. You know, today money has to move very fast, my friend. That's a wonderful thing. So, which holds correct? Uh, delay in processing, no. Faster movement of physical checks, mm, you could say, yeah, it is now, uh, no, it doesn't actually, there is no faster movement. Online image based clearance of checks, yes. Increase in associated costs, no, in fact, costs have come down because there are no movement charges, there are no administrative costs, you know, charges for, you know, moving the check around. So, three is the right thing. This is a good system, very, very good system. Things are changing, banking is changing, my friends. Government assistance given directly or indirectly to beneficiaries from poor and low income groups is known as, uh, well, it's, um, is known as, there should have been a comma here, uh, here, okay, I'll put the comma here, <laughs> is known as subsidy. So you could write, what is subsidy? Just write please and I'll give you some fake figures. Write the word subsidy, underline that, first point. Also called, also called also called under recovery under recovery we are taking the context of the indian economy okay also called under recovery next ah sorry um write this difference between difference between I am writing in short, okay, shortcuts I am using, please use the full thing. Difference between high cost price, high cost price and low, sorry, low sale price, low sale price. High cost price and low sale price. Number three, third point. One, two, three. Uh, third one is different kinds of subsidies given by government. Right. Different kinds of subsidies given by government. Different kinds of subsidies given by government. Dash food, food, F O O D, food. Uh, food, fertilizer, and uh, petroleum. Petroleum. Hmm. You could also write healthcare. Healthcare. Then you could write. Uh, oh, you can write anything. Yeah. Everything in India is subsidized. Education, education, but I want the first three more important ones. So please write food, write just the figures, okay? Food 1.15 lakh crore. I'll explain this 1.15 lakh crore, fertilizer 71.4 thousand crore. You want the exact number like this okay petroleum 41,000 crore petroleum 41,000 crore 
Hmm. So what subsidy? Let's say I come to your store. You own a store. I come to your store. This is just an ordinary example, okay? And I ask you, why don't you give me this? Sell this pen to me. And you look at me. I'm your teacher. Are Bharat is a poor man. You know, he's a poor teacher. We'll do one thing. I my cost price was ten rupees. I'll sell this to him at for five rupees. You know, some kind of guru dakshina. So. You sell it five rupees, or let's make it six rupees. You sell it six rupees. Your cost price was, you know, your sale price was usually ten rupees, right? But what is your sale price? Ten rupees. What is the cost price? Five rupees. You sell to me at, you sell to me at six rupees. So you think about it. Is there a loss here? No. You still make one rupee. You still make one rupee because the cost price is five rupees. The sale price is, you know, six rupees. You still make one rupee. The sale price. You know, is still higher than the cost price, but then you realize that no, I am a very poor guy. So Bharat is a very poor guy. So instead of um, you know six rupees, let me charge him four rupees. My cost price is five rupees. Let me take only four rupees from the teacher. So here, your cost price is more than your sale price. Effectively, you are suffering a loss. People like us call it a loss. The government calls it subsidy. Simple, si Bhasha. The government calls it subsidy. Okay. Now let me take you further on this. The government gives different kinds of subsidies. When we travel by railway, by rail, you know, when we use the railways from point A to point B, let's say we are taking the sleeper class, and um, you know, usually all classes are subsidized except for the AC, maybe the second AC and all that. That's they are not subsidized. You know, but usually everything is subsidized. All railways is subsidized. Ninety-five percent of railway passenger revenue comes from you know second sitting, second sitting you know, ticket sales. If you look at um, AC and all that, that's very low. And in India, there are only about six trains that make a profit. Only six trains that make a profit. You know, there is something weird about this. When I when you look up a next time you buy a train ticket just look it up somewhere on the train ticket on the flip it or on the main side you will find you know 43% of the ticket fare is borne by the is borne by the ordinary people of this country that is they are giving you a subsidy of 43 rupees so actual price was 100 rupees but you paid only 57 rupees so 43% was a subsidy on the railway ticket you should know this on an average 43% that's a lot of money guys that's a lot of money isn't it you look at this fertilizer subsidy almost 72000 crore rupees the government loses 72000 crore you know while giving while ensuring there is an adequate supply of fertilizer to the farmers of india so how does this work in real life see if you look at uh, petroleum i'll give you an example petroleum Let's say we have LPG at home, LP, LPG cylinder. When we get an LPG cylinder, the government would ask us to pay, let's say, 650 rupees. 650 rupees. But the actual price may be 700 rupees. 700 rupees. So the government says, okay, you pay 650 rupees, we'll pay the 50 rupees. They, they lose. See, this is how the subsidy comes. You should know in India, everything is subsidized. Everything is subsidized. And some people have given up subsidy. So the government of India recently, they launched, uh, no, three, four years back, they launched a scheme called Pahal, P-A-H-A-L, wherein they kind of ask people to volunteer to give up subsidy, LPG subsidy. So, you know, uh, let's say I have given up subsidy. So what happens is that I don't get that, you know, the difference amount. Like for example, you know, the gas cylinder price on the bill is 650 rupees. On the bill is 650 rupees. Okay, if it's a 650 rupees, the government would say, first say, Bharat, you pay 650 rupees. You know, the cost price is 450 rupees. We'll transfer 200 rupees to your bank account because they are linked. My gas connection, Aadhaar and the bank account are all linked. So 200 rupees goes into my account. Now I don't get the 200 rupees. That is how subsidy happens. Okay. So this subsidy, that money coming into your account is through what is called DBT, Direct Benefit Transfer. But some people have given up subsidy and not some more than one crore households in India have given up subsidy, which is very, very good. So if you encourage people to do good, they will definitely see good, my friends. 
okay so all kinds of subsidies come maybe in the next few classes i'll explain to you about food and fertilizer subsidy but remember fertilizer the subsidies everywhere and disinvestment we'll discuss sometime later because we are running short on time also we have to look at other questions the brian brothers have recently announced their retirement days ahead of the us open with which sport are they associated tennis they are the tennis guys you know they are two guys they are um, what are called mirror twins they are called mirror twins or identical twins mirror twins their names are robert first mera naam bhi nahi bola aapko robert and you know michael robert and michael so this is robert and this michael but are they or is this michael this <laughs> don't worry they born almost 4 minutes just 4 minutes apart 4 minutes or 2 minutes apart they were born 2 minutes apart and they are in tennis they have a great skill one particular advantage which is that they are mirror twins one is right hander the other is left hander which is a hugely competitive advantage huge competitive advantage in tennis you yeah? know so these they together have been at the top of uh, what we say you know the world number one ranking for 438 weeks world number one don't you think that's phenomenal world number one for for 438 weeks my friends that's huge that is huge my friends okay and um, between them they have won 34 grand slams between them not each okay yeah one has won 18 the other has won 16 grand slam titles and they have won olympic gold medals also in tennis so they are damn damn good okay so brian brothers robert and michael and see in some places you may not find robert you may find bob remember bob is a nickname of robert bob is a nickname of robert and when it comes to michael it's typically mike it is mike see bob is robert dick is richard um you have bill for williams you know i mean all kinds of nicknames we have nicknames in india they also have nicknames with which global technology company has the unicef united nations children's fund okay ek zamane mein children's emergency international children's emergency fund hota tha Uh, has partnered with to map internet connectivity landscape for schools in 35 countries by the end of 2023 well, answer is ericsson answer is ericsson so just write ericsson in your book ericsson uh, i'll just tell you two things about ericsson not all uh, one is um, where is it headquartered it's a swedish company stockholm it's a huge company in among you know it's a global pioneer in 5g my friends it's a global pioneer in 5g stockholm is a head office and john okay b j o r n or sorry 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 uh, that is i was just writing the full name of uh, sorry what is it uh, i was writing the um, name of uh, puma you know puma's uh, ceo john golden this is uh, someone else burje burje elcom okay yes burje elcom this is the ceo of ericsson that is where the head office is uh, coming to Samsung, you could write Seoul. That is where the head office is, and the CEO's name is Chairman and CEO is Lee Kun Hee. That is how they write. Small H, Lee Kun Hee. Cisco, you don't read why head office and everything. I just okay. I think uh, too much is happening here. Too many things, maybe some other time, but I'll just discuss this company. Here we go. Okay, but uh, Cisco, remember, it comes from the cities of the name comes from the city of San Francisco, and the CEO is a guy called Chuck Robbins. Chuck Robbins, but you don't really need to know. See, I don't want to load you with information. There are too much of information already. Huawei and um, you know uh, Jetty are both headquartered in a place called Shenzhen. 
one and three are headquartered in Shenzhen, China. Both are backed by the Chinese military. Yes, both are backed by the Chinese military. Oh, sorry, this one Huawei is a 5G pioneer, 5G global pioneer. Its chairman is a guy called, you know, uh, Huawei's chairman is a guy called Ren Zhongfi. Okay. So, then you can say, see, in some places you will find O and some places you will find E. Both are fine. Don't worry too much. Okay. Zhengfi. Ren Zhengfi or Ren Zhongfi. He is a chairman CEO. His daughter, who is a CFO, has been jailed by the Canadian government on the, at the instruction of uh, the US uh, government. So this company has been blacklisted by the US, by Britain, by a lot of other countries from bidding for 5G technologies, 5G technology, 5G and rolling out 5G network. So because China is known to steal all kinds of data, and of course this is also backed by the Chinese government. Okay, I think that's about it. Which international organization has sorry? Which international organization has released a report titled "COVID-19: Are Children Able to Continue Learning During School Courses?" Well, UNICEF has UNICEF. Okay, you could write just write um, the CEO of UNICEF, the head office and CEO. Okay, um, this is the logo of UNICEF. This is uh, in New York City, NYC, New York City, New York City, and um, it's. Director General, Executive Director, he is a person named Henrietta, Henrietta Four. In some places you will find A also, no harm, both are fine. Yeah. Henrietta Four, F-O-R-A. UNIDO is United Nations, Industri United Nations Industrial Development Organization. United Nations Industrial Development Organization. It's headquartered in a place called Vienna and it's headed by Li Yong. Li Yong. Li Yong. This guy is from China. This guy is from China, Li Yong. And uh, coming to four, she's from the US. She's from the US. Hmm? She's from the US. Hmm. Okay. Um, I think we have been discussing the IMF and World Bank. It doesn't make sense for us to duplicate information. Yesterday, I think in the previous session, we discussed UNESCO. But just for recapturing, uh, UNESCO, Paris, and uh, what's uh, the director general's name is Audrey Azule. Audrey Azule. Okay, I, I'll do one thing. I'll give the names the chief economists of the IMF and World Bank. We, I don't think we have taken these names anywhere. Chief economist only, okay? Chief economist. Uh, IMF is Gita Gopinath. Gita Gopinath. And the World Bank is, World Bank's chief economist is Carmen Reynard. Carmen Reynard. Okay, I think chief economist, some extra stuff, that's it. Which uh, Indian bank has got global recognition for its HR initiative, Nai Disha, and has won three Brandon Hall Excellence Awards, SBI. It's uh, like you know, to maintain work life balance, to ensure that employees don't stretch themselves, don't overstretch themselves. I know they are involved in the family also, to, so that to ensure employee welfare, employee health welfare, and all that stuff. Um, 
SBI, if you want to write SBI, established 1955, established 1955, you could write previously called, previously called, second point, previously called Imperial Bank of India, Imperial Bank of India, in brackets 1921 to 55. 1921 to 55. Head office Mumbai. Mumbai. Next um, CEO. What's the name of the CEO? Rajneesh Kumar. Sorry, Chairman. Rajneesh Kumar. Till October 7th. Till October 7th. Rajneesh Kumar. Till October 7th. And Dinesh Khara, Dinesh Khara from October 8th, from October 8th, he is a new chairman, Dinesh Khara. Who are the CEOs of these banks? Yes, Bank, Prashant Kumar, Prashant Kumar, it's not doing well. Uh, HDFC Bank currently Aditya Puri Aditya Puri till October 26th till October 26th till October 26th and this, this guy will be you know, succeeded by Sashi Jagdishan Sashi Jagdishan from October 27th from October 27th okay ICICI Bank CEO is Sandeep Bakshi Sandeep Bakshi Sandeep Bakshi Sandeep Bakshi Axis Bank CEO is Amitabh Chaudhary Amitabh Chaudhary. World Health Day is observed every year on 7th April. The tagline for this year is uh, supporting nurses and uh, what is it, uh, you know, midwives. That I think that's it. Yeah. Supporting nurses and midwives. And you know about the World Health Organization. In the previous class we had mentioned that it was established on 7th April 1948. 7th April 1948 is when it was established. Remember the World Health Organization was established on you know 7th April 19 uh, sorry uh, yeah 1948 and this is the reason this day is observed as you know World Health Day. World Health Day. Remember this. Okay. So is this because this belongs to the other some other question actually. Which country has released uh, the video footage of the world's largest hydrogen bomb, oh, world's largest hydrogen bomb named Sar Bomba, Sar, Sar means emperor, okay, that exploded uh, above the Arctic Circle in October 1961, Russia. On 3rd October 1961, in the Arctic Circle, you know, Russia, in those days, Soviet Union exploded a nuclear device. It was a hydrogen bomb. It was a hydrogen bomb. Do you know uh, the yield was 50, sorry, 50 empty megatons of what? TNT, trinitrogen. Imagine this, you see this picture here, my friends, okay? This picture was taken from a distance of 161 kilometers. Yes, you read it right. 161 kilometers and the height of this cloud, mushroom cloud was 65 kilometers. I'm not kidding. The height was 65 kilometers, you know, from where it exploded, the mushroom cloud, this particular thing. And this photograph was taken from a distance of 161 kilometers. Crazy, isn't it? Yeah. 
so many such power my friends and this is the only bomb they built only such bomb they built okay yeah nothing else I mean, this is seriously great kim jong un north korea uh, north korea choice 5 you could write north korea pyong yang pyong yang uh, the guy's name is kim jong kim jong un kim jong un kim jong un Okay. Hmm. And the currencies, yeah, currency you would uh, normally we go with the currency also, no? Won. Currency is won. Okay. I think we've been discussing the other countries also. Russia has the largest nuclear arsenal in the world as of today. Russia has the biggest nuclear, the big, highest number of nuclear bombs today. Maria Lucas uh, Rainwell has recently become the youngest author to win the International Booker Prize 2020. Maria Lucas, Lucas Rainwell is from Netherlands and uh, see, she identifies herself as, she is in a conflict whether man or woman, so she uses uh, they, them, she does not say, so we should say they are from, you understand that? So. Orientation here is a conflict, matter of conflict in this uh, author's case. So it's a personal choice people have. And you know, uh, Mariak Luke, uh, Lucas Rinwell uh, is from Netherlands. You could write this for the book. Uh, for the book, she won for the book, The Discomfort of Evening. Where is this? The Discomfort. I read a blurb of this, it made for very difficult story, the discomfort of evening. So they have written this book, yeah, there is this, they have written this book, so discomfort of evening. Hmm. Uh, but this is written in the, you know, in the Dutch, you know, so they, 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 she, it had to have a translator and the translator is Michel Hutchison, the translated by into English by Mich Michel, you know Hutchison. So sorry, I am so sorry, guys. I am so sorry. Happens. I think it will take a long time for me to relate to this. Michel Hutchison. So I use a sample note. That's that's easier to write than this is not so easy. Hmm? So. Written by The Discomfort of Evening, written by Marik, but translated in English by Michel Hutchison. And they won, you know, together, they won the International Booker Prize, which is given once every two years, given every two years, given every two years for a body of work, for a body of work. In fact, the author has to have a lot of books. Body of work means large number of published works and everything. It would surprise you that they, that is Maria K, has not published any book before this. This is her debut novel. That is what they said. You know, I read it. It's a debut novel. Debut. D-E-B-U-D. -E first novel. Hmm? Debut novel. Um, I don't think we would need to write anything about these countries, but uh, since we are in, uh, in this business of uh, learning more and more, let's write our Netherlands, where Maria K is from. Okay, Netherlands uh, uh, capital is Amsterdam. Amsterdam. We'll write only one or two things. Amsterdam. Chaliye koi baat nahi aur likhte hain. The prime minister is Matty. Sorry, sorry, so sorry, guys. Hmm. Uh, Mark Rutte. Mark Rutte, this is the Prime Minister, it's a monarchy, constitutional monarchy. So Netherlands' Prime Minister is Mark Rutte and uh, the currency is Euro, the currency is Euro, the currency is Euro and uh, 
See, when it comes to, we'll take one more country. Shall we go to Belgium? We'll go to Belgium. Let's go to Belgium. Belgium. Uh, Belgium. What's the capital of Belgium? Belgium is. Um, Belgium's. Uh, I think we should stop subtitles. Yeah. Belgium's capital is Brussels. B R U S S E L S. Brussels. Brussels. Okay. And. Uh, This is Brussels, and the Prime Minister is uh, this lady named Sophie Wilmes. S O. Oh, the font is bigger. <laughs> Never mind, it's okay. Sophie Wilmes. Sophie Wilmes. And um, the currency is euro. The currency is euro. It's going everywhere. I've written everywhere. I'm not tuned to this, so I think um, you know it's a long way off. Kevin Mayer has resigned as CEO of TikTok. TikTok is owned by a company called ByteDance. You could write this. They may ask you this question: Which company owns TikTok? ByteDance. Okay, it's a Chinese company. ByteDance. Which is uh, founded by which was founded by Zhang Yimin. Zhang Yimin. Okay. Zhang Yimin. Okay, let's go. Um, we'll just write one more. These days, um, this particular company has become very famous. Okay, Zoom. It's an American company. Uh, its CEO is a person whose uh, name is. Chinese currency here. Yeah, Eric. Eric Yuan. Eric Yuan. Zoom CEO is Eric Yuan. TikTok. <coughs> Byte Dance. Uh, founded by you know uh, Zhang Yimin. Zhang Yimin. The rest of the chat. See the word Instagram comes from the name Insta Instant Camera plus telegram instant camera plus telegram that's how the name comes nothing more than that okay um, you want the name of the netflix ceo reed hastings reed somewhere i believe that i'm not when i don't give a particular choice reed hastings netflix ceo is a co-founder okay what instagram is owned by you know or facebook mark zuckerberg you anyway know Long distance runners Mo Farah of Dash and Sifan Hassan of Dash broke the world record for the most distance covered in one hour for men and women respectively by running 21.3 kilometers and 18.9 kilometers respectively. Respectively should have been there. Okay, but anyway, uh, doing the Brussels speed. Imagine running 21 kilometers in one hour or 19 kilometers. Uh, Mo Farah is of Great Britain and Sifan, uh, Hassan is of Netherlands. I think straightforward question. Which of the following ministries invited in nominations for the Pradhan Mantri Rahas Rashtriya Bal Puraskar? Ministry of Women and Child Development, headed by Smriti Irani. Smriti Irani. So you could write Smriti Irani. You just write the names of the guys who hold, you know, who head these uh, ministries. Right. Um, choice four: Ministry of Women and Child Development. Smriti Irani. Smriti Irani. She is also the textiles minister. Textiles minister. Textiles minister. Look at choice one. Parhalad Singh. Parhalad. I'm sorry, guys. Parhalad. Oh. Parhalad. Sing. Okay. He's a Gujarati. Yeah. Patel. Patel. Not a Gujarati. Uh, Pranala Singh Patel. 
okay uh, is minister of culture information broadcasting is you know the person who holds this ministry also holds two other ministries okay so but anyway you write prakash javdekar prakash or i can write it here prakash javdekar okay um the ministry of youth affairs and ministers kiran rijiju kiran rijiju rijiju ramesh nishank ramesh pokhriyal you write this ramesh pokhriyal ministry of education earlier it was called hrd now it's called education good name who heads a five member expert committee constituted recently to review the charter of duties for all labs of the defense research and development organization you could write this drdo defense research and development organization defense research and development organization established 1958 established 1958 there is nothing to discuss in this question and um, elaborately 1958 uh, headed by dr g satish reddy g satish reddy g satish reddy i went to a lot of drdo labs and they are fabulous amazing labs they have amazing workers reducing the value of domestic currency against international currency is known as devaluation it's known as devaluation so uh, i am only going to talk about um, i am only going to talk about two things one is devaluation the other is depreciation okay um, you see this uh, you could write this devaluation dash deliberate decrease deliberate decrease deliberate decrease in the value of in the value of the currency in the value of the currency in the value of the currency against foreign currencies against foreign currencies against foreign currencies okay devaluation next helps second point helps boost exports helps boost exports reduce imports helps boost exports comma reduce imports comma reduce trade deficit reduce trade deficit and reduce trade deficit there are a lot of other things but this thing leave online space leave online space right depreciation depreciation of currency depreciation of currency dash relates to the fall in the value of the currency relates to the fall in the value of the currency value of currency okay due to market working market working in brackets through demand and supply through demand and supply see uh, let's say 1 dollar 1 dollar equals aaj today is this much okay but don't worry <laughs> say take 74 as an exporter see the tomorrow the government says in india the government doesn't decide the value of the exchange rate it is left to the market okay the rbi doesn't decide the government doesn't decide in some country it is done but in india it is not done okay so the tomorrow the government devalues the currency let's say deliberately devalues 1 dollar is now equal to 85 rupees okay it is more than 10% devaluation 
what will happen early see is it good for you if you're an exporter or is this good or is this good you would know that this is good why because earlier when you were exporting you were getting 75 rupees you were getting 75 rupees 74 rupees now you're getting 85 rupees you're earning more so you would you know you would prefer this but if you're an importer earlier you were paying one you were paying 74 dollar 74 rupees yeah now you're paying 84 85 rupees so you're paying more and if you're importing raw material the cost of production also increases and what you do is then you look for domestic substitutes import substitution it's called so and as imports decrease and exports increase what will happen to the trade deficit trade deficit will decrease it looks good in the short term but it's not a very good sign it's not a very very good sign maybe some other time i'll take more you know a lot more time to discuss this um see depreciation depreciation is in the market let's say this morning um one dollar equaled uh, 74 rupees this okay this is now by the evening this had come down to let's say 74 zero five seven three some number okay so this what has happened the rupee has weakened the rupee has weakened the dollar has strengthened this has strengthened this has strengthened so remember one thing that when the value of the here okay uh, you know when it is done by the market it's called depreciation and when it's done by the government, it's called devaluation. That's it. As a matter of policy, if it's done, it's devaluation. And we have done devaluation multiple times. The last time was in 1991. Okay. Oh, that was the last question. I think we spent a lot of time today. Um, so, uh, you know, we will bring in more questions like this. And if you want me to discuss one particular area for one hour, you please let us leave feedback. We'll get back to you on that. Because in the past, we have had sessions where we have discussed stock markets. We have discussed, you know, monetary policy. We have discussed, uh, what we say, fiscal deficit, budget, all kinds of things. Only exclusively those terms. So you want us to discuss, I'll bring in a lot of things, okay? And do not worry too much about this thing. It had made, you know, uh, we're just starting to learn these things. So old world teacher, okay? Thanks for being here. Have a lot of fun. Keep learning, my friends. Thank you. Stay curious.